Well, Coach, you're getting back in the swing of things with fall ball coming up. You've now had a few months to settle in and kind of get a picture of what you're going to be working with here. What are your early thoughts so far? Uh, it's been been awesome. The guys have been really hungry. Um, a lot of talent, man. A lot of really good players and a lot of guys that are ready to, to really step up and be have big time years for us. You know, a guy like Bryce Evelyn, who's who's done some good things throughout his career, had a great summer in the Cape and has stepped in. He's been awesome. This first month, he's been incredible and, and excited to get out there with guys like him and Mac and some of these older players. Um, they're just excited to be back. A hunger group of young pups that are in here and have been really good, but um, man, the script knows how to work, and I think that's where it starts. It's our job to get them prepared. It's our job to get them ready, uh, but their work capacity and how they're going about their business right now is pretty darn impressive. What's your vision for blending your brand of baseball and what you want to build as a culture with what's already existed here with the program? Yeah, I mean, I think it would be foolish not to not to continue some things that have done, gone really, really well here. You know, there's some, there's some good players, some good talent, and I think – you know, we kind of separate kind of culture in, in baseball. You know, the culture for me is going to be, this is who we are, this is how we do our business. That is, that's something that doesn't change. We talk a lot about kind of the principles of our program, the core pillars of our program, what we call the mission of Alabama baseball and what that is. That stuff doesn't change. The things that will change year to year a little bit is, you know, what does our offense look like? Are we kind of the stand up and slug at offense? Are we the create, run, steal bases, force pressure offense? And I think a lot of that is personnel driven. And, very honestly, I think our coaching staff tried to do a good job of, of coaching these first four weeks, but also kind of learning, you know, sitting back and watching some of these guys and, and seeing what they do well and how, how we can implement that into our offense. So, you know, the fall is fun. It's, I, I say it all the time, you know, I, I think the, your team is built in the fall and it's developed in the spring and it's revealed in the spring. You know, once we get to the spring, this is who we are. Let's go, let's go send it and see what we got. But, um, but yeah, I think it, it's been a, like you said, a healthy blend of both. I think, the, the thing that's not new to these guys is work. The thing that's not new to these guys is toughness and grit. Very honestly, that's a big reason I'm here. I watched last year's team, man, chock full of grit, chock full of toughness, and that drew me here because I said, man, those are my kind of kids. And so, you know, continuing to build on those principles and instilling some of our philosophy, and like I said, the kids have been hungry to learn and hungry to get after it, and it's, it's been a breeze so far. They've been super coachable, and it's been a lot of fun. For the ones who are returning, are there any challenges to getting them just, I guess, mentally settled after everything they went through the end of last season? You know, this group is super professional. Like I said, I watched them last year, and that team faced some adversity and didn't blink. I mean, they they were led by a group. Should I have my Jim Jarvis shirt on for practice today? I got my Andrew Pinkney shirt ready to wear for practice tomorrow. He's supposed to be around hanging out a little bit tomorrow. That group was led by a bunch of older, mature, professional players that – they went about their business in such a way that, man, I, I think if nothing else, all that did is test their their resilience and test their their culture of what Alabama baseball was. And from the outside looking in, man, they passed that test with flying colors. They did some special things. I was on the other end of that just dead convinced that team was going to end up in Omaha. It just felt like one of those teams. I watched them play a ton. and. Felt like one of those teams, they ran into a buzzsaw. Shoot, at Maryland last year, we ran into the same buzzsaw a, week, a weekend before, you know, so we knew what it felt like. But, man, those kids, haven't, those have, they haven't blinked. They've, I've, I've been very grateful for the way the older players have kind of taken us in, even as a new staff. And, and it's easy to, to look back on last year and say, man, we were good. We did this, that, or the other. We don't need this. We don't need that. And it's been the polar opposite. Those kids are hungry. They're professional. Um, and, man, they, they, they've been outstanding. Can you elaborate your introductory press conference, how the, the cover uh, wasn't bare, but uh, you had to restock the cover a little bit with some, some different players and, and put together a team. What was that process like in terms of you not only getting acclimated, but trying to figure out who you want to bring here and how you fill out that roster? Yeah, you know, I think, I think it started with our staff, and we knew the staff we wanted in place pretty quickly. You know, obviously keeping JJ here was priority number one, and we were able to do that pretty quickly, which was – a game changer for this program, very honestly. This this place would not look the same without him, I can tell you that. And um, so getting him in place was huge. Um, and then I knew Pap and Mo were coming with me, and I watched those three guys just relentlessly work this summer. Pap and Mo have been with me for a long time. Pap's been with me for 11 years. He played for me for four and has coached with me for the last seven. Mo's been my right-hand guy for the last two. So they knew the kind of kids that – that kind of function and the kinds that work within our program and within what we do. Um, and that's what it was that I tell you what, the, the world we're in, it can be really dangerous when you enter the transfer portal and you start trying to 
pull in some veteran presences because you can get the wrong guys. And when we're trying to set the culture and we're trying to do that, and I said that in that press conference, culture and development. That's what Alabama baseball is going to be all about. You can blow the culture up really quick, really quickly with the wrong people. And so we went to work really looking for that. You know, we knew we had some talented freshmen, you know, some really talented freshmen we've had coming in that have done nothing but prove that since they've been here for four weeks. Um, but what we wanted to do, especially in a league like this, is to be able to protect those guys a little bit, you know, and and bringing in a veteran presence, guys that have had a lot of college at bats. And, and we were able to do that, just get some really veteran hitters that have had four or 500 college at bats and have had success at this level. It allows those young pups to continue to grow. And when the rubber meets the road in February, if the young guys are ready to rock and roll from the jump, awesome. But if they're not, you have some older guys that can help them along the way and help really set the foundation for what this new era of Alabama baseball is going to look like. So that's what we're really trying to do. Bring in veterans, bring in our kind of kids that can allow those young guys to develop it and be ready to go in, in both ends of the spectrum, both the, the older players that are new coming in and those new young pups that have stepped in on campus, you know, this summer. I mean, there, there's some special kids out there. You talked about earlier uh, the offensive adjustment might be different or the offenses might look different year to year. What do you expect that uh, this, 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 this group is going uh, to be like? Well, anybody that's been around me knows I like to hit the ball out of the yard. We like homers. We like extra base hits. We like impacting the baseball. Um, one thing we spend just an extraordinary amount of time on is swing decisions and pitch selection. You know, I think you move on the right pitches, you do those things at a consistent level, you are going to drive the baseball more. You are going to get more base runners because you're going to take those borderline pitches and shoot I've, I've played against teams in this league for a long time I haven't played it for 10 straight weeks but I played a lot of SEC time, teams in my time and and the stuff is real I mean you're seeing double a stuff out here every single day you step up step on the yard and if you're going to start flailing at everything coming your way you're going to be in trouble and so we spend a whole lot of time on on swing decisions pitch selection making sure we're on time to our pitch and, and having a good plan and and I think this group's, it's got a good blend, man. There's some power. There's some young pups that have some strength. Um, there's some young guys that can really run. There's some old guys that have some power. I mean, watching Camden Hayslip hit a baseball is one of the most majestic things ever when he's on time to the right one. Um, so it's just continuing to figure that out. I think it's going to be a good blend of speed and strength, and those are the best offenses. I think one-dimensional offenses are re really easy to play against. If you're just a scrappy, you run around, bunt, do that, you, you can shut those guys down because it's hard to go do that against some of these arms in this league. If you're the guy that's going to stand up and rely on the long ball every single time, you can be in trouble because it's going to be hard when you have some of the stuff in this league. But I think this group is equipped to do both. And I think that's what the best offenses I've ever had can do. They can, they can create offense when they need to. They do their job when they need to. But they can go line up and drive the baseball and create some presence as well. And I think the personnel is in place to be able to do that. Now it's just working through – who does it is consistent enough? What order do we put these guys in to kind of maximize run production and some of that stuff? And, you know, I think it, this is what's fun about coming into a new place. I think last year at this time in Maryland, I mean, I think I knew probably seven of the nine positions. I knew the order they were going to hit in. It's like, all right, who's going to play left field hitting the eight hole? That was about the biggest decision I had to make last fall. Um, this year, it's it's a fresh late, man. It's you got Matt Cassetti back, who's, who's a superstar behind the plate. Um, and you've got some older players that have done some things, but it's where do they fit? Who earns a job? Which young pup steps up and surprises you? Which guy steps in and is a little bit ready to go quicker? But like I said, I think the personnel's in place. Now it's just time for us to kind of put the pieces together. And, and it's going to be a process through the fall. You know, we, we play Auburn here in a couple of weeks, and I, I fully don't expect us to have all the answers figured out on October 13th. But I can promise by February we'll be ready to rock. Is the plan still for Dylan Lohner going to try to play some baseball? And how do you go about working around his football schedule? Yeah, you know, we, we've had some conversations about that. We've talked to Dylan. You know, Dylan's talked with, with Coach a lot over there. Obviously, you know, football football comes first for him. And I think a lot of a lot of that the plan is for him to come over in January. That's been the conversation is, you know, him to come over in January and start working with us and doing some things with us. I think time will tell on that, right? Like, that guy starts getting too many snaps this, this fall, we, things can change, everything can change. Um, but we, we've tried to really, we don't want to be a distraction to Dylan right now. He's got a job to do, he's here for a reason, and, and we've had good conversations this summer to have a plan in place when the time is right. Um, so as of today, we're moving forward, like yeah, he'll show up in January, and I think time will tell based on what happens this fall, whether 
whether he does, whether he doesn't, and, and we'll we'll be ready and we'll be fine either way. But we're excited about the prospect of Dylan potentially coming over in January. Coach, you've talked about culture and kind of how you go about navigating that at a new place, but talk about what your clubhouse looks like. What are what are the guys doing? What are they saying to each other? What's the dynamic? What's your clubhouse like? That's what's been really cool, and that's the, the, the resources we have here at Alabama have been a game changer for some different things. And I know this sounds crazy, but the dining hall right across the street is one of the biggest things for us. I walk over there and for lunch every day I eat over there, and there's two tables of 15 of our players sitting there eating lunch together. They do the same thing for dinner. They do the same thing for breakfast. I think fellowship matters. Being together matters. And you've got a lot of different faces coming in. You've got some young guys coming in that – are stepping into a program that's probably different than they committed to and signed their letter of intent to last year. And then you've got guys from the outside, some of which we're very familiar with, some of which we don't know as well. And you're always interesting to see how that group meshes. Um, but again, I think giving Pat Moe and, and JJ a whole lot of credit, they did a good job of getting guys that are cut from the same cloth. And that's what we really look for is that the synergy and personality and synergy in the way they go about their business. Because when you plug those guys in there, and then create the right environment, those guys mesh really, really close really quickly. And, um, man, we like to have fun, I'll tell you that. Like, we got 90s hip-hop going out there. We have Return of the Mac blasting out there before I came in here. We're going to have some fun. Um, I think this game's hard. I don't think this game is meant to be played tight. This is not going to be – they're not going to feel that for me, I can promise you. We're going to work our tails off in practice. We're going to be focused. We're going to be locked in on what we're doing. But we're going to be so prepared that when we step on the field, those guys can just go send it and have fun playing the game at warp speed. And I don't, I think it's really easy to get emotional in this game. It's really easy to get emotional in this league. When you're in front of 10,000 people, it's easy for emotion to spill out. And our guys will hear me say it all the time. There's a whole, whole lot of difference in playing with emotion and playing emotional. And we want to stay on the right line of that. You want to stay on the right side of that. Because if you start getting emotional, you ride the wave, right? You ride the wave of the ups and downs. And that's something my team at Maryland taught me. You know, we had a we had a game at Illinois and we got absolutely thumped. We got beat 19 to one on a Friday and we're coming back for a doubleheader the next day. And uh, one of our guys hits a homer. I thought I thought he stood and watched it a little bit too long, particularly after getting smoked the day before. So I chirp at him to run and I turned to our dugout and I said, all right boys, when you get beat 19 to one on Friday, you don't go and mire home runs the next day. And our second baseman was sitting behind me. He goes, yeah, coach, but we're up 3-1 to today. And that was their mentality. It was it's a new day. We're not riding this wave of ups and downs. Like, we work, we flush it, we show up today to go compete. And so when you're in that locker room with us, man, we're, we're going we're gonna to give our guys a good game plan. There's nobody that's going to want to win more than us. But these kids are ready. They will be ready. They're going to be trained to be ready. The last thing they need is me, me gripping it too tight. They're going to naturally – grip it a little tighter. My job is to pull it back and get them to trust their training. And so um, I think our group's pretty fun to play with. Those guys get along. They seem to be meshing really well. Yeah, I say it a lot. Everybody gets along talk to the first lineup card out. And then, and then you know, there's some some frustrated people and there's some some things that go with that. But that's just part of this game, you know. And But they push each other. They're working together. They're pulling for each other. It's been fun to coach them, i tell you what, for the first month. But earlier you talked about the adversity your team had faced before you got here. What has that transition been like for you? Oh, it's been awesome. It's been awesome. I mean, it's 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 been a it's been a special group. I tell you what, the biggest thing I've learned here at Alabama over the first month is the people here are different in in such a great way. I mean, the passion that the fan base has is unbelievable. The care of administrators, of support staff, of all these outside people that have a million things going on. I mean, we're in the middle of football season right now and we've got we've got people pouring into our guys our sports supervisors meeting with recruits and talking with us. stuff that's just a passion for this program that that is unique and is special and is something if i'm a young player goodness gracious i could never ask for more than that and so for our staff that's what it's been it's been you know there hasn't been one bit of difficulty with anything it's i, I think i have to pinch myself every day i drive past this and realize this is where I get to go to work, you know? And so, you know, I think for us, like I said, these kids have been really hungry to to just get on the baseball field again. A lot of guys had great summers. I mentioned Bryce Evelyn earlier. The guy had a heck of a summer in the Cape. Cade Snell had a heck of a summer in the Cape. We have guys around the country who have unbelievable summers. And I think, man, they're just so ready to get back on that field and play baseball. You can, you can feel a hop in their step out there when you're out there right now. So 
you know, from our coaching staff, there hasn't been much of a, it's been arms wide open. We, there are guys, I, I don't operate with a, we'll get our guys in and we'll do that and then we'll get it right. And these are my kids. When I took this job, they became my guys. And, and I love every single one of them. I'm really happy with how they're going about their business. So really from an adversity standpoint, we hadn't hit a lot of that yet. It's just a matter of putting our head down and getting to work a little bit. Along those same lines, how have you seen Alton Davis kind of carry over last season's momentum to this fall? Yeah, you know, AD, we've had a little bit on a slower track this fall. He pitched for Team USA this summer, did a lot of that. So we kind of slowed him down a little bit. He had a huge workload last year. Um, you know, I wasn't here for AD. I watched him a lot this summer. I watched him at the end of the year a little bit. But just to hear his transformation from the fall of, yeah, he had some ability, but you know, they weren't counting on him to be this mega star. And then he turned into what he what he was last spring was huge. And I think the biggest challenge now for, for a guy like AD is just continuing to handle success properly because he's not the unknown guy floating in the weeds anymore. He's the guy everybody's talking about. He's the guy that, you know, people were at, were at dinner the other night and some young lady comes up and snaps a selfie with him. I, I told her, I was like, AD, you ain't that cool, man. Like, you don't need a selfie with her. Like, it'll be fine. But he's been awesome. He's, he's a great kid. You can't help but be around a guy like Alton and have a smile on your face. That guy loves being at the yard. He loves his teammates. He's so invested in Alabama baseball. When we have recruits around, that guy is an impressive young man to, to have in front, of, in front of guys. So we've slowed him down a little bit, just knowing that he had a pretty heavy workload from the spring into the summer with Team USA. So we've slowed him down a little bit, um, but he's looking great. He threw his first bullpen last week and looked awesome. Um, so he'll be back on the mound here for us really soon, but he's been outstanding. So you adopted the camo hats. How long did it take you to adopt that? And uh, do we plan, you plan to carry that over into the year? Well, I, was, I asked JJ, I said, JJ, I watched it. It didn't matter what uniform you guys had on. I'm not sure you had these guys on. What's that all about? He's like, when you're hot, you're hot. I said, man, you don't want to tell me that. So shoot, I wore my camo hat every day at Maryland too. It looked just like this. So um, so no, when they when they brought those in, Junior, our equipment guy came in. He said, he said, Rob, are you comfortable? Having these to practice, I was like, yeah, baby, let's go. So threw it on, and we're ready to rock and roll with them. Anything else? All right. Cool. Thanks, guys. Thank, Thank you, Coach.